Welcome to Violin Adventures number 144. We're going to start right off and get into the Massachusetts violin and finish it up and play it. Okay, we're on to the Massachusetts violin. We're going to take off the clamps and this is the fun part. It's carving the wood down and blending it so that hopefully you can't see the new pieces of wood. Okay, here's our Massachusetts violin and we've got the wood all carved down to match the other side. And now the fun part is matching it to the varnish. Okay, we're going to get started on trying to make it so you cannot tell that there was a repair right there. That's the fun part. So first I'm sealing off the wood. And while I do that, I'm just touching up little areas where the wood is exposed. Let's go ahead and set this up while the varnish sealer is drying. Okay, I'm changing out two of these little tuners, the middle D and A tuners. Okay, I changed out the two middle tuners. I put yours in the little black, in the little photo case. And I put, since I have strings with ball ends, I put little tuners on here that take either ball or, or loop. And that way, uh, whatever strings you want to use, they'll, they'll work on here. While we're at it, we need to put peg compound on the pegs. They're a bit hard to turn. The bottom seam here is open just a little bit. And so I'm going to close that up before we set this up. I'm also going to change out the tail gut. This is the old tail gut and I just don't want it to snap on you while you're playing. So I'm going to cut that off and put in a new one. Just a little bit of opening in the seams. And we want to make sure they're nice and tight. So I'm going to get some glue in here. Now while that's drying, I think we'll do some touch-up on the on our little pieces of wood here that we added. I forgot to get video of the finished product, the finished edges. They came out really nicely. So here's a picture of the new wood all blended with the old. Okay, here we have our Massachusetts violin. It's all set up. On this one, we just put the neck back where it belongs and gave it a new sound post and a new bridge and closed some seams that were open. Let's check it out. So this has a very deep, low sound. It almost sounds like a viola, which is just lovely.
violin back to its owner. So, if you didn't see, these are great ideas to put uh, one box in another box just to keep uh, it stronger. And I'm going to put the padding around this box. And we're going to finish up the Magini Copy violin. Okay, we're back on the Magini Copy. And I am going to clean off the old glue and get ready to set this neck. Okay, we got a new batch of glue. I always want to use fresh glue when I'm resetting a neck. And that takes about three hours in order to get a new set ready to go, but it's worth it. Now here, we're putting the neck on. This is, this is the Mangini copy. Okay, that was great. That went together really nicely. We're gonna let that dry for 24 hours. Okay, back on the Mangini copy. We're gonna take the clamp off and we need to take down the support block and match it. So I'll get started and then I'll probably see you after this is done. We got the little patch all blending with the button and the heel of the neck. So the next thing we want to do is color this so it all blends. So in the meanwhile, we need to get a new bridge and a new sound post for this violin. Since the angle of the neck now has changed, it looks like the bridge that was on here previously was very low, which means that this uh, neck was probably slowly bending downward under the pressure until it just snapped. We're going to finish up the Hornsteiner copy violin. Next we have the Hornsteiner copy and We have our repairs all ready to go, and it sounds good. I don't hear any rattling, so this is ready to close up. Okay, we're on the old Hornsteiner copy, and we're going to take the clamps off and get ready to put on uh, the fingerboard. We're going to heat up the glue and get the fingerboard back on. I already cleaned off all the old glue, so we're ready to go. Okay, our glue is warmed up and we're going to attach the old fingerboard. Okay, we've got our Hornsteiner copy ready to be set up. We have finished our Magini copy and, and the Hornsteiner copy 
And so we're going to start with the Majimi copy. And we just put the neck back on this one and gave it a new sound post and a new bridge. And so I'm just going to play it briefly for you. Okay, that should do it. I wanted to get all of that glue off wherever it dripped. Maybe sand it down a bit. You can see how it's just really been weathered. And I don't know if it was in a window or if it was really outside in the elements, but it seems to have water damage on it. A little bit of water stains and the wood is very dried out. So we're going to see if we can make this thing really look beautiful. 
It's time for a little miniature cello studio. Okay, it's time to assemble our special order cello studio. So you can pick the floor color and you can also pick the wall cover in the background. And then I, I put in a little bookcase with books and a little violin hanging there. Then we have a table with music, if it's violin or cello music, you can pick the color of the flowers on the table. Then we have a little tuning fork here, and we have the rosin that we just made on the table and a little Bible. And then according to your instrument, this is a cello studio. So we have a little cello and bow that we're gonna put in there. And then you can even pick the colors of your uh, little trash cans. So now it's time to assemble our cello studio. Okay, you guys, let's get this miniature put together. So first things first, we need the little cello. Next, we have our table with all those things on it. And we made a purple garbage can to match. And then with the bookcase and the little sign, we put this all together. There it is. Let's check it, what it looks like. Okay, it needs some adjustment. Okay, I think the cello is a little too high, so I'm going to take that down. And I'll be right back. Okay, we lowered the little cello box and there it is hopefully the glare isn't too bad okay it's the end of the week friday afternoon and look at the sky just beautiful blue and white and the birds are singing let's go inside and see what's going on here we are in the shop it has just quieted down, all the repairs are done, and we're ready for the weekend. Here's our cello table. It's been nice to look at during the week. Here's our two repairs ready to go, the Hornsteiner and Magini copies. Over here is the base of the string display, uh, which was probably about 100 years old, I would think. And we're gonna, maybe next week, try to make this look a lot better and bring it back to its old glory. Over here, the, the bow making corner is silent. And here's our little miniature cello studio. And Freddie wants to chat. Hi, hi, hi everybody. I, I, Freddie, and I, I, I've been, I've been practicing my violin, and someday I'll play you a song, but right now, uh, Sally sent in some pictures of what she and her husband did, so her husband made her some harps, and she decorated them, so here they are. Mrs. Sally Brown decorated this harp with the Jewels and Revelation 14.2. This one she calls her Lion of Judah harp. This is an electric acoustic violin and she added the paintings on there. Thank you Mrs. Brown for sending your beautiful projects. Wow, that was fancy. And now, oh yeah, we gotta go make, uh, we gotta go look at the bees. I wonder if I'll have time to put them on here or if the video will get too long. Do you guys wanna see the bees? Well, you have to let me know if you wanna see the, some more of the bees. Babies. Oh, there's babies there. Mm -hmm. Do you see any eggs? No. That's pretty good to be clear over there.
eggs, uh, not eggs, but uh, brood. And we got some brood there. Okay, and I got rumors that there's someone from another country and they're going to show us some stuff that they're working on. So we're going to wait for that too. Well, thank you for sending in your projects and things you're working on. And, and don't give up. Keep going. Okay, bye. The Hebrew Minute. Ki ki voach shemaim al ha'aretz gavar chazdo al yereav kir hok mitzrak mima arav kir hik mimenu et peshaenu for as high or the great distance as the heaven is from the earth so great is his mercy or kindness to those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far has he removed from us our transgressions if you know where this is found please leave it in the comments below well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of you that are commenting and getting in contact with me. And thank you for your thumbs up. And thank you to the new subscribers. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.